Good afternoon. My name is Jennifer Scherze, and I want to welcome you to today's pediatric nursing webinar hosted by author Luann Lennard Palmer. In addition, we also have Liam Butler from Jones and Bartlett Learning. He's one of our education technology consultants, and he'll be conducting a demonstration of the online course which accompanies the pediatric nursing text and is built on our Navigate 2 platform. This course is completely free with each copy of the textbook and features loads of student and instructor resources, which we'll be sure to show you a little bit later in the presentation. All of the attendee lines have been placed on mute, so if you have a question that comes up during the presentation that you'd like Luann or Liam to address at the end of the presentation, you can forward that question um, to me, Jen Scherze, the organizer. You can find my name in the question pane in your control panel, and I'll be collecting these questions for the Q&A at the very end of the presentation. You'll also find that we shared the PowerPoint slides from today's presentation as well as a few sample chapters. And you can download these from the handouts pane in your control panel too. We will be recording this presentation and the link will be sent out to you post-webinar. And if you're looking for any other nursing-related uh, webinars that we've hosted in the past or coming up this fall, you can find them on our Jones and Bartlett Learning YouTube channel. And one other quick note before I turn it over to Luann, if you do experience any delay or slide latency, just know that the system will catch up. Sometimes it just could be dependent on the speed of your internet connection. So at this point, I'd like to turn the presentation over to Luann. Welcome. Well, hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, my name is Luann Lennard Palmer, and I'm very excited to share aspects of this book with you. I looked for a long time to change the textbook that I have been using in my own pediatric theory class into something that was more concise and more based on contemporary practice. And I found the best way to do this is to write one. So I was very thrilled to work um, with the company in creating this, this new textbook for you. So again, I'm, I'm very thrilled to have you here and I'm, I'm very glad for this opportunity to share. So I've been a nurse for a long time. I've been a nurse for 32 years. And um, I started out, like most nurses in California that go into pediatrics, they start out in adult care. I did a few years of adult care and then transferred to pediatrics. And I've been teaching at Dominican University of California now uh, in pediatrics for, for 24 years. I taught at USF before that. And um, I currently work right now as a staff nurse um, at California Pacific Medical Center in San Francisco, which is a, a part of the Sutter affiliate. It's a large hospital system, and I, I feel very fortunate to be able to have a per diem position there, which influenced how I wrote this book, because my experiences in the large city of San Francisco, the diversity of our families, the um, comprehensive nature of the diagnoses I, I see, really influenced how I wrote this book. And then I work one shift a week for Stanford, um, Lucille Packard, in an outpatient pediatric oncology hematology clinic. So I have both the acute side of nursing as well as the, um, the um, uh, clinic side of nursing. So again, that all sort of influenced how I wrote the book. I was looking for something that that focused on pediatrics but crossed over the clinical settings in which our students have access to for clinical and how pediatric nurses work um, in the profession. So I have, I'm bringing that forward to you to, so that you understand where I'm coming from as the author for this. Okay. So as an overview of the textbook, I really incorporate a lot of contemporary issues that I see in healthcare for children. Um, I find that um, the book uh, sort of has two audiences. One would be for adult nurses who are interested in transferring over to pediatric care. So I included a lot of information, skills review, topics where an experienced nurse could then learn about um, best practices in coming over into our world of pediatric nursing. But I, I wanted the book for myself, for my own university, um, for undergraduate students who are taking a comprehensive pediatric nursing theory course. Uh, my course um, is three hours a week for 14 weeks. I feel fortunate in that. Many of my Bay Area colleagues have a shorter period of time for this material. 
Um, so the book, the book is comprehensive enough to cover a full semester, but it's written in a very concise voice. The overarching themes are definitely safety and error prevention. I stress this in every chapter. How best can we give care to children in acute care settings, in critical care settings, in outpatient settings, in school health settings? How do we do this with safety in mind? Um, the second focus is on the differences between children and adults. What do we really need to teach our students and to teach practicing nurses about the differences in anatomy and physiology, their development, their psychosocial needs, how to communicate with them, how to include the family in our care. So um, safety, differences between children and adults, and the developmental aspects of care are very much how this text um, is written. OK. The goal of the text was to design something that brings out the challenges of care. Now, when I go to work in San Francisco, it's not uncommon for me to have uh, four patients that speak four different languages other than English, and they have cultural rich aspects of their family, um, ethnic diversity, they're um, not necessarily confident in how to navigate the uh, healthcare system. So I wanted to incorporate some of the challenges caring for kids brings us right now and how we can best care for their families. And again, not just in hospital settings, but how do we incorporate a very comprehensive view of, of, of pediatric care. Um, I also, the goal of the text was to have the students really focus on the developmental periods. So the text has chapters that cover infancy through adolescence, and then in the chapters that cover the concept and body system combination, it also has many tables that look at the child's developmental stages. So we did that again in um, places that are outside of just the hospital and incorporated a variety of settings. Okay. So why did I think this text was essential? Well, um, I find that the texts that are available for us to choose from right now are either abbreviated in sort of bullet points or they're very, very long. So I, I wrote this book um, with the assistance of, of all the um, editors to include learning objectives that will help us as faculty select the most important topics for contemporary family health care. And with that, we came up with case studies in every chapter. The case studies have provocative questions for discussion. They sort of evolve as the chapter goes through. And then um, there are NCLEX style questions within the chapter relating to that case study. We also very carefully chose features um, there throughout almost every chapter. Some of the chapters have um, multiple renditions of the features, but they include family education, um, research evidence, unique aspects just for kids, pharmacology updates, quality and safety, and what are best practices. So they have these features that are um, sort of pop up throughout the text that focus the students directly on a topic that's most important. And again, I want to say that the essential part of this text for me was to have safety be first and foremost on the reader's mind. How do we keep children safe across the developmental periods in the various settings with these topics? OK. The topics that are covered, um, again, they, they look at the fact that children are not little adults. They have specialized skills. They have different physiology, physiology, different anatomy. They have very particular developmental care needs. And that critical thinking is a must. I know that we all stress critical thinking across nursing education. And it may be that each one of us here today has a different model for critical thinking. I chose one that is a four-part model that I put straight up in the first chapter to um, encourage the students to look at material through that, that problem-solving way of thinking. 
And this, this model that I um, chose for this has four parts to it. How do I recognize various assumptions? How do I seek integrity and use courage? How do I problem solve what's, what's right in front of me? And then how do I make decisions and evaluate those decisions? So it's a four-part model in it. And again, it, it has that overarching theme of safety. I looked at contemporary pediatric nurse, nursing practice problems that I face as a, a practicing nurse in a variety of settings. And I have a postdoc from UCSF under Dr. Susan Cools um, under pediatric symptom management. And I have an entire chapter, it's one of the longest chapters actually, that looks at symptom management, chapter 11, 51 pages long, it's the longest chapter, but it looks at um, a symptom management model of assessment and treatment management and evaluation using UCSF's faculty symptom management model. It looks at discomfort, fatigue, dyspnea, nausea, um, emotional distress, and sleep disturbances. So I take those, those six symptoms, the human symptoms, and I wrote a chapter on how best to apply this model to children. And I've never seen that in another book, and it was something I needed as a teacher and as a practicing nurse. So I, I think that's a highlight in the book. Then the other challenge that so many of us face is do we do this in a conceptual format or do we use body systems? How do we present our material? And I know that I've hosted um, discussions on our campus with other pediatric faculty from other schools, which is really fun, sort of like an advisory board. But we went around and, and, and uh, talked about the challenges of do we offer peds in a conceptual model or body systems. And what I've done for this one is what I do in class. I combine it. I, I bring in the concepts that relate to the respiratory system, the cardiac system, um, skin integrity. And so it's, it's a nice way of combining the two together for both novice nurses going, going into pediatrics for the first time and for um, nurses that, working nurses that want to come into pediatrics. Okay, so the book um, is laid out in 30 chapters, um, and there are very carefully selected appendices, the kind of appendices that I need for my students in my teaching and for um, the nurses that I work with at the hospital. So the 30 chapters, um, they're divided into units. Um, the first set of chapters are introductory, carrying across clinical settings, a whole chapter on safety, a chapter on culture and religious influences to care and treatment decisions, working with and communicating with interdisciplinary teams, and then the book goes into all of the developmental stages, the infant, the toddler, the preschool, school age, adolescent, and then symptom management, families under stress, and then it goes on to include um, the concepts and body systems. So it's, it's written as concisely as I possibly could have, Again, my challenge has been the textbook that I use is very long. Students do not complete their reading. They're honest with me in that. And I know that in class because they can't answer most of my questions. So I really wanted a book that was comprehensive but concise, if that makes sense. And um, these are the features on the slide that you're looking at that pop up throughout almost every chapter, sometimes not every feature is in every chapter, but it may be that there are several of the same features in one chapter. All right. So again, why was <clears throat> this book written? Um, many textbooks for me are either bulleted or they're too long. And I've been looking and looking. I've, I've taught this class now uh, for um, many, many, many years, 24 years. And it's been evolving, but I've used the same textbook for the majority of my time here. And I was really looking for something different, something that has examples of contemporary care that are based on reality. The examples that you see in the book are situations that have happened to me. The case study is the same. I wanted something that weaves in the latest research findings and what's new with pharmacology. And I wanted it to be short. Um, most of the chapters are 20 to 35 pages in length. Some of them go over it a little bit. I have a chapter 27 is on essential skills for the pediatric nurse. That's one of the longer ones. Um, and again, symptom management, 
is also a longer chapter. But I wanted to keep it um, very doable for our students. Okay. So the book is different um, in that it's, it's, again, divided into shorter chapters. It reduces that long burden of reading. Um, it has these cases that are based on reality. And let me speak just briefly about the 12 appendices. It took us a while to figure out how best to design appendices that the teacher and the students could use it, use them immediately. So we have an appendice on the helpful organizations that you, can, that you can become a part of or contact, look at standards of practice, suggestions for, for pediatric nursing education. I have uh, an appendice that covers 18 of the medication calculations that I see in my hospital, from medication administration to fluid maintenance, calculating kilocalories. Um, there are 18 of them laboratory values, there's an appendix on growth charts, how best to give a handoff. I'm, I'm always challenged by that, even though my students are the end of their um, junior year, being able to give a very wonderful handoff, a report that is meaningful and comprehensive that they're proud of and the recipient understands the complexity of the family's care needs. That means a lot to me. So I've included a, a, an appendice about about handoffs. And then I happen to be quite fond of mnemonics and have created a number of mnemonics for, for rapid recall of information. So I have an appendice on checklists and mnemonics, everything from code blue to a quick um, preoperative and postoperative checklist. And then there are, there's another appendix on safety tips and how to reduce medication and medical errors, and um, an appendix on maintaining professional boundaries which I know is a challenge for many pediatric nurses in practice. So we, we carefully chose these to be of service to both you and the students, and um, I think they really work. So um, why adopt the text? Well, again, I, I want to say that I've done it in the most real-world view that I can, and um, uh, it has an interdisciplinary team approach to it, and uh, it's based on safety. So that's why I encourage you to look at this text for adoption. Um, it is as contemporary as I could have possibly written it. So um, I think that, um, again, my personal experience in this um, is important. Um, I work in a very, very large healthcare system, see a lot of families in crisis. We have acute care episodes, lots of trauma, but we also care for children with chronicity. I happen to have a specialty in hematology, oncology, and you know we see those families for all the way through the developmental period from diagnosis through treatment through surveillance. So I, I promote those long-term relationships with the families. And um, finally, I think that, um, that you and your students might actually really sort of like this text, uh, the concise writing style and the comprehensive um, appendices. So that's it for me. Um, I look forward to answering any questions that you have. And I'll give it back to Jen. Thank you. Thanks, Luann. That was just a really great overview of the textbook. I think why instructors and students alike will really benefit from this new format and you know all of the thoughts and ideas that you've really put into this. So at this time, we're going to talk a little bit about Navigate to Premier Access. So as we mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, it's a full online course. It will be available this fall. It comes free with each new purchase of the textbook and features just really a wealth of resources. So Liam is going to go through and give a product demonstration. So just bear with me and I am going to transfer um, the see your screen switch a little bit as Liam shares out his screen to do the um, demonstration. Okay, excellent. Thank you, Jen. And uh, good afternoon. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about pathophysiology. I'm going to demo pathophysiology course for you. Um, but once again, the pediatric nursing will be available later this fall. So the content is obviously going to be different, but the way Navigate 2 works and function will be the same 
uh, not only across pediatric nursing but all our nursing titles. So once you get used to using Navigate 2 uh, for one text, it's going to work the same for the other text. I also want to mention that Navigate 2 does come with every uh, new textbook. So when your students purchase a new textbook, Navigate 2 access will be included in the form of an access code. But they can also purchase uh, access to Navigate 2 digitally. And that's generally at about a 50% price of the textbook. And then finally, I'm going to show you a quick preview of Navigate 2. If you'd like a full demo or a trial course, um, you can reach out to your account manager and we can get that set up for you. And then with Navigate 2, it also has an integration feature. So it can be paired with Blackboard or Canvas so that you can have your students link out from Blackboard or Canvas directly into Navigate 2. And if you do that, students will not have to sign in to two different places to access the content. And then finally, before we jump right into the demo, uh, test banks can also be made available for D2L or Moodle if those are the learning management systems you're using. Uh, or you can use Navigate 2 and you can do everything right through it. So this is really the main page of Navigate 2, which is the Lessons tab. What we're in right now is the instructor view. Students are going to see this course in a very similar manner, um, just without the teaching tools and editing features that you see here. If we come down here and click on one of the chapters, we're going to see all the resources that we've built into it. So for pediatric nursing, just like pathophysiology, we do have interactive lectures that we'll have for each chapter. So this is just another way for students to go through the content of the book. And as they go through, they can read it. We do have a table of contents. They can't skip ahead, but they can go back to any slide they've already seen. So it's a great way for students to go through the content, especially you know, if they've already read the chapter and they want a quick review it, review of it, they can come right here. If we go back to the course, you know, we have built in things like learning objectives that students can download. We have also added in our ebook. So the ebook is a really cool tool that we've added in to the course. Um, it is a digital version of the textbook and there's two ways students and instructors can read the ebook. One is on the browser, like I'm showing you right now, but we also do have an app that is available. It's called Navigate eReader, and it is a free app that's available for students. And once you sign into the app, you can download the book, and you can also take it offline. So the app is the primary way students can read the ebook through a mobile device, whether it's an iPad, iPhone, or an Android phone or tablet. As you can see here, we've also um, added in some additional features into the ebook. So throughout the ebook, you will find these little icons here. These are different animations that we've added in. So these are almost like short, short videos we've added in. There is audio. It's coming out of my headset right now, but there is audio that comes along with a lot of these animations we've added into the ebook. Students can also add in their own notes and highlights into the ebook. You can jump to any section of the book, so right from the beginning all the way to the appendices, so you can get quick access to those. We do have a built-in glossary available for the students. And then right here, this resources, you can come over here and you can easily find the different resources we've added in. So in addition to the animations we've added in, we've also added things like knowledge checks into our eBooks. These are ungraded questions we've added in. It's a study tool for students to go through. They can take these as many times as they want to. They can see if they got them right or wrong, and they can go through the ebook. And then, so once they're done here, and one moment while I just close that. Once they're done here, um, they can also then go back in and do ebook quizzes. So the end of chapter ebook quizzes, these will report a grade into the grade book. And students are able to go in and they can see what they got right and what they got wrong with the ebook quizzes. Once they're done, it will score it immediately. And then it's in the grade book where they can see, you know, what they got right and what they got wrong. So these are available right out 
of the box for students to take and they will report a grade, but they are going to be different questions that we have available in our test bank, whether you use that test bank through Navigate 2 or through another LMS, the ebook quiz questions are separate so that students won't get the right answers on the ebook quiz that might be on the final. But it is a great way for them to go through and see, you know, as many questions as they can. We have also added in flashcards. Yeah, flashcards are a way for students to go through the glossary term in the book, so it's going to give them the definition, and then they come over here and they put in the term, and then they can check to see if they got it right or wrong. It's another study tool, so it doesn't report a grade. They're really just here for students to go through on their own, and they can take these as many times as they want to. And they do have the capability of jumping to a particular question or definition if they want to. And then you also find we've added in our PowerPoint slides, lecture outlines, and any other instructor resources that would be appropriate for students. We've added them right into each chapter for you. So you don't have to go in and add in all the content yourself. So, so far everything we've shown you is on the Lessons tab. Learning tools, this is also available for students. It's all the same content I showed you, just rearranged in a different order. So if students want to jump right into the lectures, and go through each lecture individually without having to open up 14 different chapters, they can do that. And then we've added in teaching tools, and this is great for instructor resources. These are the items students will not need, and these are the items we've added in for you. So here you'll find things like the instructor manual or the instructor resource guide. We've added in to navigate to sample syllabus. Uh, we do have a competency mapping. And some of our courses will have time on task for the different items that we've added in to navigate to, among other things we've added in here. So this is a great resource to come to as the instructor in the course. So if we go back to the course, um, I also want to show you that this is very customizable. You know, we have it based on chapter, but if you need it to, you can combine chapters and make this a weekly base uh, setting or a module based setting. So you can very easily add in your own topics into the course, just like I did with course schedule and syllabus. And you can move this wherever you want. So maybe you want to create a topic that's uh, for your syllabus or an introduction topic that just explains how you want your students to nav use Navigate 2. You can do that. Any of these topics can be renamed. So you can come over here and rename um, either anything you've added or anything we've added into the course. You can very easily drag and drop your own content into the course. So if I were to drag a file from my computer over introduction, maybe it's a syllabus or a PDF, it would automatically upload it for me. Uh, but you can also come to add an activity or a resource. And if we go down to resources, you can add in things like files. URL will light and link out to different websites. And if you need to, which can be very helpful, you can embed YouTube videos right within the course. So that way your students don't have to go to YouTube, they can watch the video within your course, and that helps eliminate a lot of distractions that comes with YouTube. And then you also have the capability of adding assignments and discussion forms into the course. Uh, what I want to just show you quickly here is navigate to assessment. This is where you can create your own assessments within the course. So. Once you come in here, um, you can really create anything you want, anything from a practice activity all the way to a graded final. And you can very easily create a multi-chapter test if you need to. So you'll have things like, you know, when it opens, when it's going to close, how much time students will have. Now, once you actually create the test, you do have the ability to give additional students or individual students more time. So if you have a student who has an ADA requirement, you can come in here and give them additional time and not have to raise that time for everybody. So once you go through the settings, you know you can choose how you want your students to be able to review it, when they can review certain items. And then now we can go in and pick the questions we want. So with our test bank, we have our quizzes um, set up into different categories here. So if you want to quickly create a chapter one quiz without having to go through all the questions, we have it separated for you. 
but you can also very easily come over here and pick out the questions you want and create a multi-chapter quiz. So if you don't teach in uh, terms of chapters, but more of a, a lesson base or weekly base, you can very easily create quizzes that reflect that. We also have suggested midterm and final categories set up for you. And then we have practice activities, which can be used as practice activities if you want, or you could use these as additional questions to use on a quiz, test, or exam. And these are the same types of questions you find in chapter quizzes. And they'll grade just like the chapter quizzes. So once you're done here, um, it automatically saves. And the next thing I just want to show you before we're done is the gradebook. So if we go over to the gradebook, go to the grader report, this is where we're going to be able to see, you know, all our students in the course. And then you're going to be able to see all the gradable items that we have. So you have the ability to review the quizzes of your students. You can see how many students took it, when they started, when they finished, and what grade they received. And if we select the grade, we can then review the attempt exactly as the student took it. So we know exactly how they responded to each question. So if you need to go back over and review the test or exam with your student, you know exactly what they answered for each question and the order they answered it in. And then the last thing I just want to mention with the gradebook, it is uh, very customizable. So you do have the ability to set up weighted grading and customize that. And that's something we can always uh, work with you and set up with you, you know, as you're using Navigate 2. So that is a very quick uh, overview of Navigate 2. Once again, if you're interested in a trial or interested in getting a full demo, you know, that's something you can reach out to your account manager and we can get set up for you. And at this time, I'm going to pass it back over to Jen. Excellent. Thanks, Liam. I think that was a really great overview. And I'm just going to switch back. Hopefully, everyone can see that uh, last slide that I'm showing. Actually, I'll flip the screen here. If you have any questions, uh, Liam and Luann are available to answer any questions that you might have about the text, about the content. It will publish shortly at the end of the week. We're very excited about that. If you would like to request an instructor review copy, you can do so by visiting go.jblearning.com slash pednursing. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about Navigate 2, you can visit jblnavigate.com. And Luann has also offered up her email address kindly. And if you have any questions for her, you can reach out to her directly. And you can also replay and you can share the recording of this webinar with your colleagues or if you just want to uh, reference it down the road. That will be available on YouTube at the link provided. It doesn't look like we have um, any questions from our audience. I want to thank everyone for taking some time out of their day to join us. I also want to thank Luann and also Liam for their time today. Luann, I don't know if you have um, anything that you want to close with. No, just thank you for um, listening in and feel free to contact me. Absolutely. Excellent. Thanks, everyone. Have a great rest of the day.